Good morning everyone. What a beautiful day that the Lord has made and blessed us with. The 17th of May 2007. Today, God wants you to rejoice and be glad in the gift of life that He has given to you, which is in the 17th of May. Yes, it's a beautiful day, and God wants you to rejoice and be glad in today. Now, we are going to just speak in tongues and worship the Lord and surrender it all to Him. Whatever it is you are going through, it is God who is going to help you. God is the one who is going to help you. So we are going to pray, we are going to worship the Lord, and surrender everything to Him. As we do that, I want you to just invite your friends and family members to join in. And kindly share this quiet time on your timeline. So that it will bless many, many people out there. Remember, it's only for 30 minutes. So quickly invite your family and friends to join in. As you do that, please speak in tongues. Worship God this morning. Surrender it all to Him. He will take care of you. God wants to step in and help you and rescue you from that which you are going through. He alone can and will help you. So quickly do that. And as you do that, please pray with me in thanks. And let's surrender it all to the Lord. Ima basan de re ve kan de re bo shan de re ve ko bare an de ve kon da re mo sin da re va ko de re bo shi cha re ve do de re be da ra ban ima men de re ve kon de re mo sa cha re ve do de re bo shan de re be ima man de re ve do re ma si kan da ra va sho cha re ve de mi zon de re ve kon de re bo shan de re ve ko bare a se cha re va do de re me ka cha re ve do re be Zima kondere mo shandara vandore mo zi Bikhe valo ma si bare mo shay chere ven Ma sondere ve kondere mo shandere ve kondere bo sa chere ven dore ba Ima bo sindare ve kondare ma sho chare ve don dara be ke chare be Vindore mo zi ma be da kindere mo shandere be Ve kotare bo si bare ma kota vendore ma shondere be Ima so chare ve ko bahayan dere ven dore ma si chara vandon dere be Ima men dara vandara bo shandere ve ko bare ma sin dara vakondere bo shandere Ima bo si chara ve ko pare su me don dere be ka chare ve shot alamar Vi andare mo sin dare mo kondere bo shin dare ve ko dare mo si ma don dere vendon Avant de les mots, il m'a donné des rebots, il m'a donné des rebots. Mosse te le verrai, mosse ma roba hayat. Vi adore, mosse ma no ken te le visan, te le movinda le mot. Mi doni mosse ma don de le ve, con de le mosse te le ve dore adaraba. Me so vero, me si ke ti li voshi na do mosse fa re ko te le. Ve don di li mosse ma dore, va i on di li ma dore ba, di ke te le ve so te. Ima do dara vo dara ma san de re ve kon de re mo shin de re ve kon de re mo si da re ma ko te re ve sho te re ve do re bo Imo dara va de da re mo si ma kon dara mo shi ta ra va de da re mo de re ma si va no Ve ko te re ve bari a diri mo si kan de re bo shi ta re ve do re man 
Ima donde ele vê, baru e adore, mas su vera, o baquete ore vejo. A rovi bare o se peque, tire mo sin da do que te arebo chat eleven. A menda na vol da rebo si baque vado de ribador. A cote eleva chu bare, que tire mo sin ma do de leve co pare ver. Misuri adore mo si pare mo si, que te arebo chandore mo con de leve. I mo sato leve co tarabo chot arebe do leba co tarebe. I ma do de leve mo sente eleve con de leve mo si tarebe co pare e sotele. Dear Lord, we honor you this morning and we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you alone are God, the most powerful God. Among the gods, there is none like you. Therefore, Lord, we choose to stick to you. You have stuck with us, stuck to us, despite everything. Sometimes we turn our backs on you, but you are so, so faithful. You're always there for us. Dear Lord, we come before you this morning and we are so sorry for leaving you sometimes. We apologize, O oh Lord. Forgive us of our sins. And this morning, O oh Lord, we ask for your presence in this place, in our homes, in our offices. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you come and feel us. One more time, feel us today. Grant us grace, O oh Lord. Strengthen us with might in the inner man. Grant us grace for the day in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we approach your word, we pray for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation and understanding in the knowledge of you. Open our eyes, O oh Lord, that we may behold the wonderful things that you have in your word for us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning one more time. My name is Pastor Mrs. Engineer John Bright. I bring you the quiet time written by my father, Bishop Dagwood Mills, on behalf of my pastor, my counselor, my best friend, my husband, my producer, the one and only living mandate, the love of my life. Reverend Peter Bright Sr. He extends his love to you this morning. Now I kindly turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 19. And we apologize for the hitch that happened. So I'm sure you have two notifications that we are live. The second one is the one to watch. Please turn with me to Luke chapter 8, chapter 19, verse 11 to 27. Today we are going to be looking at the topic, gaining by trading. Gaining by trading. Luke chapter 19, verse 11 to 27. Reading the King James Version. And as they heard these things... Okay, let me give you a little sequel to what they heard. Jesus came into Jericho and Lazarus wanted to see Jesus by all means. And he was a man of small stature and he decided because of the multitude that were pressing, he could not make way to see Jesus and he couldn't see him. So he decided that he was going to climb the sycamore tree. You remember that story? Yeah. It's right here in Luke chapter 19. So he climbed it. Jesus saw him. Jesus told him that today I'm going to dine in your house. So Jesus went to Lazarus' house and people were murmuring and saying all manner of things. And Jesus addressed it a bit. Then now in Luke, in Luke in verse 11, I'm reading Luke chapter 19 verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added... And speak a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Verse 12. He said therefore. Now this is the parable we are going to be looking at and learning from today. A certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them 
ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. A certain nobleman was going, was traveling into a far country, and he called ten of his servants, and he decided to give each one of them a pound. Talent. And you have a talent this morning. You just need to sit back a little, identify it. So, in verse 14, But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. He gave, when he was traveling, he gave everyone an amount of money, a pound, and he, after he came back, even before he could go, they had sent word that they don't want him to reign over him. Sometimes that is what we do to God. He has blessed us. He has deposited so much talent and giftings in us. And we want to go about our own selfish businesses and do not want to use it for the very person who gave us the thing. He says that we should use it for profit. We should use it to gain profit. But sometimes we sit back and we do not want to use that which God himself has given to us. That is really not fair. It is God that has given you the talent that you have. He is the one who has given you the ability to be able to play the keyboard. So why do you want to be begged before you play the keyboard in your church to the very person who gave you that talent? You didn't do come about that talent by yourself. All you needed to do was to sharpen it, which is what is required. If you do not sharpen the gift, you cannot be skilled, effectively skilled in your gift. Let's continue reading. So he called everybody, all the servants, and that is what is going to happen on the judgment day. And sometimes... Ah, your judgment may be different from your friend's judgment. That friend that you are following who is not using his talent to glorify God. You are following that person. Your judgment may be today. If you drop dead today, your judgment is happening. Because you have already been called home. There is no more, no more any, in, any opportunity for you to use your talent. So why don't you use it now? And God expects to gain some profit from the talent and the gift he has given to you. There will be a day of reckoning. We will all account for that which God has called us to do. That which God has given to us to do. There is going to be a day of reckoning. And I don't think you want to be hot on that day. So the master called everyone. Verse 16. Luke 19 verse 16 now. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound had gained ten pounds. This servant was given one pound, he gained ten pounds by means of use. Verse 17, And he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very late little, have thou authority over ten cities. He was giving one pound, he gained ten more pounds. Now the Lord rewarded him beyond his comprehension and gave him ten cities. Verse 18, And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound had gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. So you can see that the reward is commensurate to that which you have gained. If you gain ten pounds more, 10 pounds, you are giving 10 cities. If you gain 5 pounds, you are giving 5 cities. There is no need for jealousy here. That which you have gained is proportional to the cities that you are going to be to receive. It's very proportional. So we all have to be advised 
take a good cue lesson from this and work hard with that which God has given to us that we may be able to gain much more verse 20 and another came saying behold here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin for I fear thee because thou art an austere man austere means a strict man thou takest up that thou layest not down and reapest that thou did not sow and he said unto him out of thine own mouth will I judge thee out of thy own mouth that which you are saying is out of what you have you yourself you are saying that I'm going to judge you thou wicked servant thou knewest that I was an austere man taking up that I laid not down and reaping that I did not sow wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank that at my coming I might have required my my own with usury and he said unto them that stood by take from him the pound take from him the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds the person who had only one pound because he did not use it because he said that his master was strict was an austere man and wicked and that he reaps at the place where he doesn't sow the master said that take from him even that single one pound that he has take it from him and give it to the person who has 10 pounds who has much more if you don't use the gift that God has given to you and make profit on it God will take it from you and even the amazing thing right here in verse 23 is that the master said you know that I'm a strict man so why didn't you even put you don't want to work with the gift then you should have at least put it in the bank so that I will still have some profit upon it God definitely wants profit from it whether you are using the gift for yourself or others are using it on your behalf there must be some profit so whatever it is God is definitely expecting profit from it and if you do not use it and God does not receive profit he's going to take it away from you you will lose that gift he will take it away from you and give it to someone who is making use of the, his gift he said take the gift from him and give it to the person who has 10 pounds verse 25 and they said unto him lord he had 10 pounds the person already has 10 pounds you are telling us we should give it to him 26 for i say unto you that unto everyone which had shall be given and from him that hath not even that he had shall be taken away from him but those mine enemies which would not that i should reign over them bring hither and slay them before me god wants to rule in the in your affairs if you do not allow him to rule he will take that even the later you are trying to protect he will take it away from you if you want to save your life you will lose it that is what jesus told us you will lose your life if you want to save it it's better to surrender it all to the lord it is better to surrender it all to the lord this parable jesus told us by himself it's a huge big advice to us that we need to learn from to understand this into much more than my daddy has written on this book bishop that mills has written on this book extensively i have not come across any book like this in the whole world he that had shall be given and he that had not shall be taken even that which he had that is the title of the book so for short we call it he that had 
I want you to grab this book from the Macarius and read it. Read it seriously and gain by trading with the gift that God has given to you. You cannot have more if you do not trade with that which God has given to you. Remember, it's God that has that gave you the gift in the first place. It's just like giving your child toffee and you are asking your child, give me a little of that toffee. And your child says no. How do you feel? How do you feel? We were not made by ourselves. God created us. Genesis 1, 26, 27, He created us in His own image. Male and female created He them. You did not create yourself. It is time to live for God. It is time to use that which God has deposited into your hands. And if you do not use that, the gift that God has given to you, you cannot gain more. You cannot gain more. Even the little you have will be taken away from you. I want us to look at what my father is saying on this topic. Bishop Dakiwal May says that, do you want more anointing on your life? There is a process by which anointing and gifts increase. There is a process. By trading, I now minister to thousands of people every week. I always thank God for His mercy. Learn another secret right here. After improving through the secret of gaining by trading, after improving through the secret of gaining by trading, God will lift you up by another method I call kingdom promotion. A kingdom promotion is an elevation that is so lofty that it makes you marvel at how far the Lord has brought you. So lofty that it makes you marvel at how far God has brought you. The man who was given authority over 10 cities could not compare his new status with his former job of trading with 10 pounds. In the day you receive a kingdom promotion, you will know that God has truly lifted you out of the dust. Gain by trading so that you receive kingdom promotion. You cannot gain more if you don't trade that which God has given to you. You receive more when you trade. The anointing on your life, on a particular thing, a particular area, for example, if it's evangelism, 
the anointing for evangelism increase on your life when you begin to do it the anointing the healing anointing increases on your life when you begin to do it do you have administrative gifts are you calling to the ministry of health you become more and more effective as a health minister when you continue you begin to do it and you continue you are consistent in it you become more and more effective you gain by training and after gaining by training god himself will give you kingdom promotion he will promote you in the kingdom and the kingdom promotion when you look back is much 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 more cannot be compared with that which you gained that is the supernatural aspect of it when you look back you wonder is this me yes it is you and that is what god wants to give you this morning that is what god wants to give you this morning i want you to just quickly listen to this song keep on doing the work of god by Ida, written by Bishop Dakiwood Mills. Keep on doing the work of God. about to hit your screen and get this the key that has okay get the macarius it is in the macarius grab the whole macarius call any of the numbers calling on your screen right now and if you are outside nigeria kindly visit www.dakiwardmills.org click on the worldwide offices click on your country and you will see the number to call to grab this book. I want you to get this book. Call and get the whole materials, the whole 40 collection of Bishop Dagwood Mills books. And you can also grab these books on the anointing. Okay, because the anointing increases as you 
do the work of God. This is catch the anointing. All right. Then we have steps to the anointing. We have sweet influences of the Holy Spirit and amplify your ministry with signs and wonders. You need all of these books. I've introduced to you five books now that I want you to read. Grab them from the materials. Also get this one from the Mantano. The Mantano is 11 textbooks. 11 textbooks written by Bishop Dagwood Mills. This is the theory and practice of operating in the anointing. The theory and practice of operating in the anointing. This book will help you. It has simplified it. You can use it to teach others to also gain by trading, increasing the anointing so that they can eventually receive kingdom promotion. Do not withhold that which God has blessed you with and given to you. Use it for his kingdom. Till I come your way again tomorrow by the special grace of God at 6.30 GMT time. My name is Pastor Mrs. Engineer John Bright, also known as Mrs. Monday. Have a blessed day. Keep doing the work of God. Do not hold back. God will take care of you. Just keep doing his work. That is the secret. Goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow.